Today we are going to talk about 7 things you can do to lower your blood pressure. An extremely high blood pressure would be, we have the systolic and the diastolic. The systolic is the contraction of the heart and diastolic is the relaxation. It has a lot to do with something called the autonomic nervous system, where you have the flight or fight it's called sympathetic. The digest parasympathetic which is the recovery and it's an active type of system that helps calm things down. So, we have a balance of those two parts of the nervous system that are on automatic. So, we're looking at here, extreme high would be 180 systolic or greater than that, or greater than 110 diastolic. High stage 1 would be 160 to 179 systolic, and diastolic would be 100 to 109. High stage 2 would be 140 to 159 systolic, and diastolic would be 90 to 99. Normal high would be 139 to 121 systolic, and 81 to 89 diastolic. And normal 120 to 80. The important thing to know is that if you get high blood pressure just one time, it's not very valid. You want to check it through the day and see if it's consistent. The worst situation is that if your blood pressure is high all the time and it never comes down, that just means that your arteries are very stiff and they're hardened versus. It is fluctuating here and there, that's a better situation to handle. There are seven things that I would recommend. Starting with you guessed it, alpha keto. Why? Carbohydrates in general retain a lot of fluid, and what's one of the most common medications that they use for blood pressure diuretics? They're getting rid of excess fluid, you go in keto. You're going to dump a lot of fluid, and there comes the blood pressure, just by going on a low-carb diet. Second, intermittent fasting vital to decrease inflammation in your arteries. Also, the combination is very very important to take the stiffness out of the artery itself. Number 3. Decreasing cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone from the adrenal, and if the adrenals are involved, and the cortisol is too high. What's going to happen is the systolic is going to go high first before the diastolic. Conditions of high cortisol like Cushing's syndrome is high blood pressure, but you'll normally see the systolic go high first, and you just want to lower stress. You should go for long walks, eliminate as much stress as possible. Number 4. Taking Vitamin D3. Vitamin D actually will help lower your blood pressure. Your vitamin D deficient blood pressure tends to go up. They don't know exactly why it does that. One theory is that the regulation of calcium supports the sympathetic nervous system in a certain way, but it actually will lower your blood pressure. Number 5. Increasing Vitamin K2. What is vitamin K2? It's different than K1 and this vitamin helps to remove excess amounts of calcium from your arteries and puts it in the bone. So, these two together combined are really important in lowering blood pressure. Number 6. This is probably one of the more important ones, increasing your potassium. There's an incredible article written by several medical doctors that involve taking larger amounts of potassium to drop blood pressure with incredible success. If you're low on potassium your blood pressure will go up. One of the main functions of potassium is its ability to be a physiological tranquilizer and just calm the nervous system right down, so it's a relaxer. So, if you're deficient of potassium, blood pressure goes up. Guess what creates potassium deficiency? That are refined sugars in carbohydrates. All right, last one is increasing magnesium. If you're deficient in magnesium your muscular system, the muscles within the vascular system are going to be tight and the blood pressure is going to go up. It just so happens that the foods that are high in magnesium are also high in potassium, like in leafy vegetables. So, these are the seven things that you can do to lower your blood pressure. Thanks for watching. So, if you're enjoying this content go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.